to row and you're in a boat that's not rowing well, it's very difficult to learn. So we like to use the erg because it's a very controlled environment. Then the barge is our next environment that more variables come in. Now we're using an oar. Now there's water and wind, other people, but it's still very stable. It's not likely to tip or anything like that. In fact, I don't think a barge can tip, though. Mm -hmm. I guess yeah. never say never, right? Mm -hmm. So, I'm sure, somewhere on YouTube, there's a video of one flipping. Um, okay. So, what you want to do is um, the pick drill works us through all the phases of the rowing stroke that are really important. So, would someone like to repeat any or all of the three joints in rowing? Ankle, knee, shoulder. No, it's knee, hip, knee, shoulder. Hip, oh, knee, shoulder, hip, knee, and hip, and hip, shoulder. Damn. Um, elbow and ankle. Exactly. Right. Paying attention. Right. Exactly. So our key one, or our key three, are our knee, knee hip, 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 shoulder. shoulder. And then the peripherals are the elbow, elbow and ankle. Exactly. Right. Oh. All right. So during this drill, we're going to end up working through all of them. Okay. So the pick drill, you start at the finish of your stroke. Okay. The finish of your stroke, you should have all your joints maximally extended in terms of rowing. Right? You could always move these joints in a different way outside of rowing. But in rowing, you want your legs all the way straight. Right? Your knees are fully extended, but they shouldn't feel like they're ready to like break themselves or something because you're overextended. Pressure through the feet. Right? The ankles should be flexed. Calves should be engaged. The hip should be greater than 90 degrees between the quad and the in the back and the shoulders should be back right you want to have you want to feel like your shoulder has come around and is pinching your shoulder blades together in the back right you don't want to have your shoulders way up you want to have them back okay so the pick drill starts with just arms right and it, so it's just that shoulder joint and how we can use that in routing Right? And as we do this, we want to talk about length. Right? So you want to let the arms really come out right? while keeping all your other joints where they're supposed to be. Right? So that it's almost like Jan likes to say there's a cookie on the table and you're trying to reach for that cookie, right? but you can't move the rest of your body. Right? You really want it and it's just a little bit beyond you. And you get it and you want to pull it into you. Right? So that's the idea of reach, right? that length. You want to create length by reaching with the shoulders. But you don't want to move the hips to do it either. Right? You just want to create looseness in the upper body to go for it. Okay? So you take strokes like that, and then we add in the next joint. What's the next joint down the chain? Hips. Hips, hips exactly. So shoulders, hips. Okay? When you get the proper hip angle, your hips will be on this side, uh, we'll call it a head because everything's moving into this direction, right, on the drive. You want your hips ahead of your shoulders and you want your back as straight as possible so it can be angled, all right? To do this and keep everything horizontal, you need to still keep your shoulders light so that they can move the handle. So that they, pretend there's a glass table here, right? And you're just trying to slide your hand right across the top of it, right? Handles out on, hands on the end of the handles, flexible, loose, Right, but still, the legs are engaged. You should still have some tension on the footboard. Okay, and you want to feel this stretch in the back. And now, when you do the drive, the first joint to move is going to be which joint? Your knees. No, your hip. Well, the first joint to move will be your Right knees. now, from where I am, as I go back. You go back. Oh, you go back. It's yep. hips. It's going to be hips, right? Yeah, exactly. So you want to let the shoulders stretch. Right? You want to let them stretch as the hips move. Okay, this is creating that really important whip in rowing. Okay, um, we're gonna pause there real quick. The first half, more aggressive and more whippy as you're able to add the momentum of the legs at the beginning to give this initial speed to what we're doing. But the reason we start from the back half is because it's really important to know how these work independent of the legs. Because a lot of people blur it or just use the legs as their main source of power. It really should be that continuing acceleration that maintains our power. Right? So, back and then arms.
arms, or shoulders, hips, and now you're forward, and you want to, we'll take 10 strokes just with the hips, letting the arms hang, trying to use our body weight to kind of suspend against that handle, okay, keeping, you got to keep good tension in the core or else it'll start to tax your back, but, all right, you want to, Try to be able to feel that you're producing power and acceleration. That fan noise is a good thing. Right? You want to feel like you're producing that just with the hips. And you should feel like, oh man, I'm almost tipping over, right? You still want to keep that force on the toes so that you're kind of gripping so that you're not tipping over. But um, you should feel like there's this momentum that's pulling me because that's when the hands come through. Right? That there should always feel like there's momentum pushing you. And instead of you having to create momentum, you're taking advantage of it that's already there. Right? Obviously, all of it's created by you. The erg's not going to move itself. I wish it would. Um, but you shouldn't feel, except at the very beginning where you're like, okay, nothing's happening and now it's all on me to drive. Right? There very quickly becomes a, okay, there's something happening here and it's my job just to stay up with it. Like to stay with it, the speed that I've produced. Okay, and as you become more powerful, more aerobically fit, more technically sound, you're going to be able to really produce some great numbers on the earth. But even now, you can still produce speed, right? You can produce quickness without necessarily putting in a ton of power or effort to do it. That's the goal? That's the goal, right? So we want to be able to be quick, not necessarily like feeling like we're pulling so hard, veins are ready to like explode in our neck or something. Okay, um, because a lot of people confuse that. Like, oh, it's not moving fast. If I just push harder, it will move faster. Not really. It will, but it will still be just as crappy. So you're just working harder to make it not smooth. So you can make it smooth without putting in a ton of power. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Rowing is a weird balance. It's delicate. It's not. It is an alpha male sport where like people who love to work hard do great but it's not just about mindless like moving it's it's about figuring out how to make it work together so yeah you want to feel your hips moving and then hips and shoulders okay. so this is the second phase of our picture we'll take some strokes here and then we'll go up what do you, what's our next thing if we're going to move a little further up? It's going to be knees, right? Knees are our next jump, exactly. So shoulders, hips, knees. We only want quarter slot. It should just be a slight bend, okay? We're going to call this about half slide, three quarter slide, and full slide. Full slide, our shin should be totally vertical, okay? So if this is 100%, this is probably about half, right? We want half to be where our knee makes 90, because what's going to happen when our, when our first joint reaches 90? Then you get to the next. You go to our next, exactly, perfect. So quarter slide is pretty much where your, where your upper body is going to be at 90, okay? So, or your hip rather, so to stay consistent. So,